Shargao is the surfing capital of Philippines and your trip wouldn't be complete without hitting those waves. So if you're a beginner and you're thinking about surfing in Shargao, keep watching. Hey guys, I'm Jojo Kino and I'm a traveler, blogger, and pineapple addict and I write travel tips for female travelers on my blog at travelingpetitegirl.com. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Shargao travel guides and tips. I really appreciate it when you do. So let's get started with the first timer's guide to surfing in Shargao plus some tips so don't forget to stick to the very end because I share some good ones. Let me first say I'm a beginner surfer, not a pro surfer. I just want to share my experience of surfing in Shargao and I know there are a lot of people who are beginners like me so I thought I'd make this video to help them get started. Okay, so now let's get started with what to prepare. So what to eat. Just like any workout, a snack or a light meal will do. For me, something not too heavy like a smoothie from Shaka Cafe is great. You can also grab a light meal if you plan on surfing longer than an hour. I went to Hirana Surf Resort because I love their tuna panda surf with truffle mayo and I also love petting their dogs. So whatever you choose, definitely drink a couple glasses of water because you need to stay hydrated with anything that has to do with the ocean. Next up is warming up. I suggest warming up your joints like walking on the beach or doing some yoga, something that will give you a clear head and limber up. I didn't do any warm ups and I definitely felt it in my hips once I tried standing on the board so definitely warm up. What to wear? If you're like me and want to look cute, go for it. You're much more likely to enjoy an activity if you're wearing something you feel badass in. I opted for snug bikinis and a cute scrunchie to keep my hair back. Something not to wear is a string bikini because hitting those waves can easily be a nip slip or vag slip galore, trust me. So don't wear a string bikini. Stick to something that won't slide around like a surfing bikini, a one piece, or a rash guard. And wear sunscreen. A great sunscreen is Headhunter sunscreen, face stick, and the Sun Bum mineral based moisturizing sunscreen lotion and the Surf Mud to take covering cream. That's a lot. Um, because these are made for rigorous water activities and they won't make your hands slippery when you're holding on to the board. My sister had trouble because her hands were slippery, also her feet too, and it was hard for her to stand on the board. You can also find these products at any surf shop in Chargao like Fat Lips, Mamon, um, or Kermit. Where to surf? There are plenty of surf spots in Chargao and if it's your first time we're probably staying at Henaro Luna and over there the most popular spot is Cloud9. Just make sure to head to the beginner side and don't surf without an instructor. Also, if you go to Cloud9, you'll find a sign with the best surf spots on island according to their difficulty. Where to get surf lessons? If you're looking for a one or two time session, looking for surf lessons in Chargao is as easy as walking into Cloud9. Like literally, I've never been approached by so many surfer dudes all at the same time. Muck surf come on, muck surf come on. Muck surf come on. It was like the seagulls from Finding Nemo saying mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Next up, certified or uncertified instruction. Mm. You must know that there are not really strict requirements to have a certification to teach surfing. There was a child who got reef rashes all over during his lesson and after the whole ordeal, the instructor was nowhere to be found. The same sort happened to my sister. She got clocked in the forehead by her surfboard and her instructor didn't know what to do when he saw blood coming down between her eyebrows. And while my friend was treating her, my sister's instructor stayed quiet on the sidelines. He even told my friend, please don't tell her, please don't tell her, when he saw blood coming down her face so uh. but in my experience as long as I followed my instructors directions and communicated clearly with them I was okay so I leave that decision up to you and in cloud nine if you walk into any surf stall lessons go for 500 pesos or about ten dollars for a one hour lesson I went to jacking horse and was instructed by John you can walk in and ask for him he's really cool and awesome to learn from if you're wondering about language barriers most of these guys will first ask Tagalog or Bisaya I chose Taglish, <laughs> but most of the guys know basic English, so if you're a foreigner, you'll be okay. What surfboard to use? Your instructor will be in charge of this, but odds are it will be a longboard, and if they have one, a longboard with a soft top. This will also give you more surface to stand on, is a lot more forgiving when balancing, and is much more comfortable to paddle on. 
How to get your photos taken. You can hire a surfer dude to take photos and videos of you during your lesson. It will cost 300 pesos or $6. If you want to keep memories of surfing or if you're like me, you're a blogger and you need some b-roll, some content for your blog, this is a great option. Most of these guys know how to use a GoPro if you have one. They'll even take photos and videos with your phone and somehow not get it wet. These guys will also give you reassurance, give you tips and help push you back to your instructor. Like just listen to this guy. Wow. Wow, really nice. Oh my wow. Smile, yes. Yan. Wow, wow, we. Babak na. Paddling, paddling. Yeah, nice long ride. All right, tips for surfing. You've already prepared more than you can and now you're ready to hit the waves. So here are some tips to start you off. Tip one, know the surfing etiquette. Knowing a few things like the surfer's right of way and communication is important before you set foot in the water. Tip number two, it's easier than you think. Before you hit the water, you're going to get a quick session of how to stand and how to balance on your board. You might feel like you won't be able to stand on your board, but it's actually easier than you think. And you're probably going to see yourself riding those waves sooner than later. Tip number three, bend and smile. When you take off, look forward, bend your knees and smile. Every time I do this, I end up balancing better and enjoying the ride much more. And if I end up losing balance and falling, it's usually because I didn't bend or smile enough. It's funny how it works that way, but I think your instructor will see the same thing if you end up falling. He might be like, you didn't smile, did you? Plus, if you have someone taking your photos, you're gonna wanna smile anyway. Tip number four, don't dive off or jump feet first from your board. Fall on your back or butt because odds are the water isn't that deep, so you don't wanna land hard on your feet or head. You can tell how shallow it is by the people standing in the video. Tip number five, you're gonna be paddling a lot like a lot. While surfing is a whole body workout, your arms will definitely be getting the most of it. To catch the wave, you'll have to paddle real hard. Then you'll have to paddle back out again. It really helps to be a strong swimmer. I'm not but it wasn't too bad anyway. Tip number six, you might get tiny cuts on your feet. And it's normal to get these cuts, especially since your skin is soft from being soaked in the water. It's not a necessity, but you can wear booties, but it might feel awkward on the board. Next up, what to do after surfing. So you're done surfing, what do you do next? First, it's the most obvious, is drink lots of water, as you should always do with any workout or any time spent in the ocean. Next is stretch. This is to alleviate any tightness you might have and prevent any strain when you're back on the waves again. And my favorite, eat. By the time the waves are gone, you've had definitely built an appetite. I recommend a hot bowl of bulalo from Bulaloan or any food from Mama's Grill. If you're wondering about really yummy places to eat at, check out my other video, 10 Best Foods You Must Eat in Chargao. You can also check my other video, A Solo Femur Traveler's Guide to Chargao and 10 Mistakes to Avoid if you want to know what to do and what not to do aside from surfing. And if you're wondering about about what to pack for Chagall, check out my blog, I have a great packing list for you. And while you're there, subscribe to my email newsletter. I host giveaways for my email subscribers because they are like my OG followers. So that's all for my first timer's guide to serving in Chagall and I hope this inspired you and taught you a few things to help get you started. That's it for today. I love you, talk to you soon, and travel safe. Mwah.